My name is Patrick Samuel. I'm an artist from London and was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome last March at age 38 years old. Recently, I was also diagnosed with ADHD combined. In my talk today, I want to share my story with you and how I'm using art to turn my life around, develop coping mechanisms, and communicate with a world that has felt alien to me my whole life. The pictures you'll see in my presentation are pieces I painted and drew since I've started my daily art therapy in December 2016. And even if I won't talk about them in great detail, I hope they'll do some of the talking as well. As a child, my behavior was already challenging. I was hyperactive, I would get distracted, restless, and angry very easily, and was prone to outbursts when things suddenly changed. Severe meltdowns where I'd kick, scream, and bite were so frequent that I was excluded from kindergarten for antisocial behavior. Often, my dad would take me on long drives in his car, Having my head by an open window whilst driving was very soothing. But it was my mom who saw art as a way to calm me. She encouraged me to paint and draw and color and nurtured every creative passion I had. She showed me how peaceful and rewarding drawing and painting could be. Art reduced my hyperactivity and helped me cope with sensory overload. I wasn't seen by any specialists during those years. Autism was just not spoken about. As I got older, I stopped doing art because there was no one to nurture it. So I had no outlet for my frustration and eventually became destructive with not eating, self-harming and being medicated. After school, I was unable to hold down jobs. So I decided to start over and move to Berlin where I worked as a play worker at an international school. The school recognized that although I was able to organize exciting activities for the kids, play with them and care for them, I found social situations challenging and couldn't focus in meetings and generally had a hard time managing myself. Eventually, they recommended I be assessed for autism ADHD and dyslexia, but I didn't know how and was scared, so I tried to forget about it. My contract at the school ended in 2003. I returned to London, enrolled at university and studied philosophy. It was a small group and there were no exams. My lecturers saw my difficulties quickly exempting me from seminars and allowing me shorter passages to read. After graduation, I thought now I had a better chance of finding a job, but it was a disaster each time I tried. Without a diagnosis, and as a result of not having coping mechanisms and calming strategies in place, 2016 was the worst year of my life. It became much worse when I entered teacher training, which did not go well and was short-lived. By December 2016, I was in hospital with an overdose, having attempted suicide for the second time in my life. Until then, I didn't have any support. For eight years, I tried to get a referral for a diagnostic assessment. I was prescribed medication that was more harmful than helpful. I went from counselor to counselor, but it never addressed my condition. In a nutshell, I was told I didn't look autistic. It felt like I was falling through the cracks in the system. It was only after my suicide attempt that my condition was taken seriously. I was referred to the complex care team. My MP also stepped in, helped to get my GP to make the referral for my diagnostic assessment and the CCG to approve the funding. My diagnosis, treatment plans and many appointments followed. There was also full-time care and finally tailored medication. 
The thing that played the biggest part in turning my life around, though, was getting back into art with the start of my daily art therapy. At that time, I didn't talk, and I couldn't go out on my own. When things got too much, I was headbanging, and I found expressing my thoughts and feelings impossible. Eventually, my friend and carer gave me an empty drawing pad and told me to just draw what I was feeling, to let the pencil do the talking. I hadn't drawn in 20 years because I'd forgotten how, but some 40 minutes later, I finished this self-portrait. It reflected everything I was feeling, or rather not feeling. This was who I was, and in that moment, I actually felt something a little feeling of release. And since then, I haven't looked back. Each day, I'd complete a picture. At first, I was reflecting a lot of myself and trying to communicate what I couldn't express in words at the time. I wanted to talk about my attempted suicide and the times I tried to run away from things, and I was doing it through art. Eventually, I started to look beyond myself. I started to draw my dog, then my friend and carer, and I drew animals and forests, then portraits and the stars and universes. Each picture would tell a story, because that's how my mind works, not in words, but pictures. I would use art to process difficult moments and communicate to others what was happening. By doing this every day, the incidents where I was self-harming started to happen less frequently. I saw that I could find ways to cope. I wanted to have better days, like this one, painted from the memory of an afternoon spent on a quiet hill in North London with my friend and my dog, looking up at the sky. Here are a couple of my favorite pieces that I did. This one is called Self. My carer once told me, if you can't feel your feelings, then draw yourself. And I often did when anxiety and insomnia got the better of me. This self-portrait was completed during one of those sleepless nights. I found it difficult to draw my own facial expressions as I couldn't quite grasp what I was feeling. Reading faces is still one of the things I struggle with in general. I posted the drawing on social media around 4 a.m. and the unfinished portrait resonated so much with people that I decided to leave it as it was, as a symbol of how facial expressions are lost on me, even my own. This one is called Never Phone Home Again, which is a mix between the two taglines from the films E.T. and A Nightmare on Elm Street. There's a bigger story to this painting, and one I'd really love to tell you, but you'll have to come and find me at my stand to do that. <laughs> this is Chase. He's my four-year-old Belgian Malinois. He's trained to give emotional support. He can detect when my mood changes, and he'll come over to engage me in one of his activities, which helps me snap out of it. He makes me laugh when he falls off the sofa and walks into lampposts. <laughs> He's also very protective, always alerting me to danger and helping me to stay focused when we're out walking together. I love drawing and painting him. It's another way of having him around me. Art fills in the gaps with what my medication can't do. It gives me hope and helps me find peace. When I'm drawing or painting, I'm much calmer and a lot more focused. It's what's been lacking in my life, and I'm grateful to have some release from the chaos and the confusion in my mind. And I like to use my experiences to help and inspire others. I want to use what I have for good rather than the harm that I've been causing to myself and others in the past. Art therapy. It's something we feel we know about because it sounds so familiar, but if we were to explain what it is, would we be able to? <coughs> I didn't really understand it at first, and to be honest, 
I didn't even realize I was doing it. Whether I use pencils, pastels, or paints depends on my mood and what I'm feeling to explore that day. Family portraits, for example, they tend to be done in pencils. They're moody, reflective pieces, and they help me work through emotions and memories when I'm doing them. When I'm feeling more adventurous, I gravitate toward color. I work quickly. I do one piece a day. I can't carry it on longer than that because I can't hold the feeling longer than that. I guess it's the ADHD part of my condition. Challenging and complex is the term that they tend to use for me. I've been called worse things before, so that one I'm okay with. Creative paintings, creating paintings like this trilogy has a calming effect on me. It eases the tensions inside of me. And I've noticed how the sensory experience of painting helps me in everyday life. Especially painted colored patterns allows me to remember those moments. It's like when I feel overwhelmed and anxious, I can paint or draw my way out of it. Once a piece is finished, I can see the story in it, and it becomes clear to me what was on my mind. And that's my therapy. To be here now, telling you about it and showing you these images is the best way I have of demonstrating what art can do. Obviously, I'm still at the beginning. I'm working on intuition and imagination. I'm learning to look at things from different perspectives and not just in black and white. On the other hand, like with this triptych, working with limited color palettes helps breaking down complex ideas into more manageable thoughts. What art therapy is also doing is helping me understand myself better. Why did I swallow those pills? Why do I bang my head? Why do I want to be alone? I couldn't answer those questions until I was first able to draw those pictures. Because that's how my mind works, in pictures, not words. I think art therapy doesn't work for everyone in the same way, and there are many ways to approach it. To find the right one, it's important to make the first mark. Once art therapy started working for me, though, it's like the whole universe opened up but I have to keep doing it every day, even when I have a concussion or have been restrained or just dealing with the side effects of my medication. Through art therapy, I also realized that I used to have unachievable goals. Accepting the limitations autism and ADHD placed on me was the first step to finding my potential. just waiting for the slides to catch up. In the past 18 months, I've taken part in group exhibitions and art festivals. I've had my first solo exhibitions, and my next one will be opening next week in London. These are events where I struggle socially and experience sensory overload, but there are opportunities to practice social skills and to put into use the calming techniques and coping mechanisms I've been learning through art therapy. I feel I've found my voice, and even finding words has become easier. I know I'm different. My brain is different, and my life is different. I don't have family. I have one good friend, one strange dog, and one childhood friend sitting in the audience. <laughs> I feel there's not much I have in common with people. But now I have art, and I think that's helping. Art therapy has shown me a future I can look forward to, and a way to build a life. People will often ask how they could get started with art. What should they do? And what if people don't like it? I always start with the same piece of advice that my friend and carer gave me. Draw what you feel. Let the pencil do the talking. There's no harm in trying, so why not give it a go? And so what if people don't like it? It's not meant for them. 
It's meant for you. Your art is for you. It's about you. It's what you're thinking, feeling, and experiencing. Draw what you feel, and what comes from that is an honest representation of who you are in that moment. It's all the things that you couldn't say before. It's all the pain and the hurt you couldn't let go of. It's all the joy that comes with that sense of release. It's okay to get mad at your art. Smear the paint, rip up the paper. Do what you need to do to express yourself. Stick it back together if you want. Use pencils, old newspapers, envelopes, macaroni, glue, shoe polish. Use whatever you have. Art is about expression and release, and it's about you, no one else. I used to say to an autistic girl that I worked with for two years that I was there to help her find her superpowers. I was able to support her because I understood her needs well, and the main focus of my work with her was, intuitively, through art. Along the way, I realized she was already amazing as she was. I watched her bloom with the benefits of art therapy, acquire so much confidence in herself, and master so many social skills. The irony is that now I'm on a similar journey myself, hoping to connect with the world in the process. Thank you.